This video is going to show you how to go from a simple uh, free body diagram to math equations. To begin with, we're going to start with, uh, when you're working with this, you're going to create your own equation, starting with this. This is the sigma symbol. In math, it means the sum of something, so you're adding up stuff. Now, this is kind of a fancy symbol because of the font on the computer. What yours would look like is something more like this, just with straight lines without those little serifs on the end. Straightforward, quick to draw, easy to do, but like this in red. So sigma, we're going to sum up something. So in math terms, sigma, we're summing up the forces in a direction, and we're going to choose the x direction. So I always put an f indicating I'm summing up the forces, and then I put the direction I'm summing them up in, which in this case is going to be the x direction for the sake of the example. And that's going to equal something. In fact, that's going to equal either the mass times acceleration, or it's not going to equal anything. It'll equal zero, one or the other. So when you're looking at the problem, you've got to look at what you have. If the velocity changes, it's equal to ma. If the velocity does not change, like maybe it says it's moving at a constant velocity, or it's at rest, because that velocity doesn't change, then it would be equal to zero. Final step, you're going to say all the vectors in one direction equal all the vectors in the opposite direction. And that is how you make the math equation. So let's look at a free body diagram and see how we use this to make a math equation. Here's a free body, free body diagram that we've already drawn. And I've got my forces labeled. And all the forces going horizontally are going to create one summation equation. And all the forces vertically are going to create a second summation equation. So let's just look horizontally at what's going to happen. So I'm going to write with some of the forces in the x direction, and that's going to equal 0. So it's going to equal 0 because in the horizontal direction, the lengths of the vectors are the same. So therefore, there's no net force. There's no net acceleration. It's equal to 0. Nice and simple. And then I'm going to add and subtract the vectors moving only horizontally. I'm going to ignore any everything else. So I'm going to ignore F1 and ignore F3 for the moment, just the horizontal ones. So what I'm going to do is everything going in one direction minus everything going in the other direction. I'm going to choose the positive direction to be going to the right, kind of like a math class. And F4 goes the opposite direction, so I'm going to use the opposite sign. That's why it's negative. I'm adding them both, but F4 goes the opposite direction, so it's going to be the opposite sign. Now let's look at the other equation. Some of the forces in the y direction. So I'm only going to look at the forces going up and down. So I'm going to ignore F4 and F2 because they don't go up and down at all. There's no component of them that even goes up and down. I'll start with my summation symbol, sigma, and then F in the y direction. So I've got sigma F Y. You always include this first. Okay, this is just part of the form, just like writing proper paragraphs. This is what you do. That's either equal to 0 or MA. Well, I have nothing in the picture, at least, that indicates that there's a net acceleration. So it's going to be equal to 0 because my length of my vectors are equal. So the length of all the vectors going up equals all the lengths of the vectors going down. There's no acceleration. So some of the forces in one direction minus the forces in the other direction. So I'm going to choose up to be the positive, and then F3 goes the opposite direction, so it's the opposite sign. Because this is equal to 0, you could do this backwards and say F3 minus F1. Mathematically, because it equals 0, it's the same thing, but only because it equals 0. All right. Let's try a different free body diagram. A few more forces, a little more thing, a few more things going on. Let's get rid of the arrow. Okay, in the horizontal direction, I'll start with sigma, as always. F subscript x, because it's in the x direction. Now, in this case, I can see horizontally there's an ma. So somewhere in the problem, when I created the free body diagram, I figured out there was a net force in the horizontal direction. So that's where the ma came from. So that means some of the forces in the x direction equals this net force. Now, I look at my other forces. Okay, the other way to look at this too is because the way I did the free body diagram, F2 is longer than F4 and F5 when they're placed tip to tail, like they are in the diagram. Now let's look at the other forces. F2 minus F4 minus F5. So all the forces going in one direction minus all the vectors going in the opposite direction, because that's what the negative sign means, opposite direction. But when you're looking at it, the signs do matter this time. You see, MA points to the right, and F2 also points to the right. Since they both point in the same direction, they have to have the same sign, because signs are illustrated by directions. F4 points the opposite direction, opposite sign. F5 points the opposite direction, opposite sign. Now let's look at the forces in the Y direction. So some of the forces in the Y direction, sigma F subscript Y, is equal to 
Well, there's no net force going up or down, so it's equal to zero. And I'm going to ignore everything horizontal. So I'm ignoring F5, F4, I'm ignoring MA, I'm ignoring F2 because those are not vertical. Because it's equal to zero, I'll have the sum of the forces in one direction minus the other direction. So I'm going to choose up minus down, so F1 minus F3. But because it's equal to zero, I, I could write them backwards, and it would stay the same thing. So here's how to deal with the free body diagrams to math equations for the simple ones. Next video will show you how to do this, how to deal with them when they're on an incline.